I was born in the beautiful state of Colorado. However, there was distinct change in my surroundings when my family moved from the city of Aurora to the city of Littleton when I was 10 years old. Aurora, at least the area I lived in, was quite ethnically diverse. I just didn't notice it when I was a kid until we made the move 20 minutes south to Littleton. Being a suburb of Denver, a decent sized city, Littleton is not completely devoid of ethnic diversity, but there is no doubt that middle to upper middle class white families dominate the area. This didn't bother me growing up though. It was a noticeable change from my previous neighborhood in Aurora, but I never felt that I lived a particularly sheltered life. I was friends with people of different races, religions, and sexual orientations. I didn't live in the city, but I didn't live in a little bubble either. Even as an adult, I continued to live in different areas of the Denver metro area, surrounded by mostly white people, but with a sprinkling of different cultures. I knew there were other areas of town, economically depressed areas of town, that didn't match my idea of Denver, but I never really went to them. I never really had a reason to. Until one day, there was a volunteer opportunity at my work. I volunteered to do a presentation for second grade students at a Denver elementary school for the nonprofit organization Junior Achievement. I wasn't a teacher, but just an office worker who wanted to get out of work for a few days. The school I was assigned to was located in one of the more economically depressed areas of town. When I showed up, I wasn't surprised to see a lot of minority children. Just like all children, they were very curious and excited to see a guest speaker in their classroom. One of the first things I had the children do was to write their name on a place card. Right away, I could see the differences in the children from this school compared to, say, the school my daughter was attending. Some of these kids, even in second grade, needed some extra help with this simple task because they were raised in Spanish-speaking homes and did not speak fluent English. Now, when I was in school, I had known a couple of kids who had just moved to the United States who were still learning English. But this was a handful of kids in just one small classroom. I was completely taken aback. But also, surprisingly, the language barrier didn't turn out to be as much of an issue as I originally feared. While I personally don't speak Spanish, many of the children in the classroom did, and they were more than willing to help out their classmates who needed some translations. I really enjoyed my time volunteering in this classroom. Even though there were some clear differences in the quality of their education, such as the level of reading and math that many of the children displayed, some of them were barely able to read or do simple addition or subtraction, even in the second grade. I was amazed at their camaraderie. They knew when their friends were struggling and without being asked, they would offer to help. I had unknowingly made a lot of assumptions about low income schools and even the kids that attended them. But after working with this group of second graders, I felt genuinely enlightened and inspired. Created using Powtoon.